So here is the unit itself, and it's kind of like a little, I don't know if iPad is the correct word. Uh, <laughs> um, it's handheld anyway. It's not like a lot of these cameras. I've tried a bunch of them. Uh, I've tried a bunch from like Wish, you know, which is just, they work really bad. It's just the single camera facing straight forward. And that has two issues. First of all, the camera is not fisheye enough and you can't do, you can't look like 360. So you can't see the valves on the cylinder head and stuff like that. I never even showed them on the channel because it just, I just couldn't get it to work properly. So I think that this is a much better solution to have something that is a little bit standalone. And also, I mean, if you're working on a car, you're likely to be a little bit dirty and you don't want your phone and, and uh, you know, getting the sensitive touch panel and stuff, getting all that mushy on there. Uh, so I would actually prefer to have something of this size. And this is actually the camera wire, if you will. So we got five meters of cable, which is almost a little bit too much for if, if you're just gonna use this as a mechanic. But hey, if you wanna use it for something else, then I don't know what, drain pipes maybe, uh, inspect those or something like that. It's more than enough wire though. Uh, so we got five meters of wires and on the end here, we have the camera itself or the cameras because we have one on this side one on the other side and one in the front and they all have their individual lights which is um, which you can set at three different intensities so you have like low medium high on each individual light which is pretty cool and if you happen to drop something into the cylinder head there's the cap on here which protects the threads on this camera you can just screw that off and then you'll get this as well, which is like two accessories. And you can go ahead and screw these on like so. So you just attach them to the camera and this one is magnetic. So, you know, if you've dropped an M6 into your engine, you can go in there, look it up with the camera, see it, catch it and pull it out of there which is pretty neat. Uh, if it's something that you can grab onto, we've got a little grabber, which is just does the same thing. Just put it on there. You can kind of, I don't know how you, if you want to fish something out. And, uh, but well, I'm, I'm not going to do anything of that. So I'm just going to put the protective sleeve on here. And this thing plugs up pretty nicely right here. A little safety right there that holds the wire. This is a USB-C as well, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in. Uh, actually, you're not supposed to have this on while you're plugging that in, but yeah. Uh, let's restart it. And if you have a look at that, now we got the front facing camera. And I mean, let's go for this text right here. That is pretty dang good. I mean, that is more than enough. I'm like, one centimeter away. That is pretty good. And then you switch the cameras. Uh, I think it's right there. Yeah, see, now we got the camera on that side. Switch it again, we got that camera right there. And then you have the three intensities, off, light, medium, high, and you have that for all different lights. And the cameras, as far as I'm concerned, are, you know, same quality. And I guess we're gonna to switch to the front phasing one there again. And if you want to, let's say you're in the cylinder and you wanna take a picture of a broken valve or something, you can just hold it and you press the camera button. That'll give you a snapshot. So let's go into the photo album. Yeah, I've taken some pictures here already. And uh, you can open that up and you can see it. And then we go back. And let's say we want a video instead. Then you just hold in the camera function and it'll start recording. So now we're recording a little video here. We can go inside this nozzle here. We can have a little look. Yeah, we got some dirt there in the filter for the, uh, <laughs> for the uh, ugga dugga there. You can see like the quality is really good. That's pretty amazing. You gotta clean that out. Anyway, 
So we're done recording. Just hit that button. We'll go back. We can play it again. Uh, hit play. And there we go. And there's a little SD card in here. Right under here. Right there. That you can remove, put into your computer. I think, anyway. Uh, and you can upload that to, uh, to your PC. Or whatever you're using. So I say, let's try and check this thing out in the real world with the Volvo. Let's turn this off. Just hold that button, power off. Done. The only thing, the only thing that I'm missing that gets a minus for this. Where's the case? There's no case. There's nowhere to put this thing. And that is the only thing that I can feel is not very good. Um, but other than that, I'm pleasantly surprised, both with the price, the quality of the image, the fact that you can take photos, videos, the lighting function. So far, very pleased. But let's try it in the real world because I haven't done that yet. And uh, we'll do an evaluation. So let's go. Let's turn this on. All right. Oh, so it's pretty oily on the outside there. Doesn't look very pleasant. And there is the cylinder. All right, guys, I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized the cylinders are just drenched in fuel. And that's because in that video, I drove the car in here. It was like minus four degrees outside. So it got a proper cold start. And I just drove it in there. I shut it down. I stick the camera in there and it was just really wet. So I decided to reshoot the scene. And what I've done is I've had the car yesterday. I took the car out. I brought it up to operating temperature and then I drove it in here, took the spark plugs out. And now we're going to see once it's dried, how it looks. I haven't had a look in here yet. So, so let's do that together. All right. So we got her on again. I'm actually going to go ahead and get something so that I can turn the crank as well. All right. So let's have a look, see if it looks a little better. Yeah, that's a lot drier. <laughs> that looks a lot better. That looks more normal. It's not just completely drenched. All right, so we're gonna go with a different, different camera there. All right. Yeah, now we can see a lot better. Uh, so there is the valve. You can clearly see. Got a little sit on there. It's the intake valve. So already that's not, that's a little weird. It's got a lot of sit on it. Hmm. Now, third camera. Looking pretty good. All right, so what I'm mostly interested in here are the cylinder walls. So, oh, well, it's pretty tricky to get the camera in here with the pressure pipe. Take another camera angle here. There we go. Okay. All right, so that's, that's kind of what I didn't want to see right there. See, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of worn in the cylinder walls. Can you see that? So it looks to me like the piston is a little bit tight in here. Definitely. Uh, I'm not a professional engine builder, so I need your guys' help with this to determine like what is wrong here. But I think that there's probably, you know, some kind of issue with the bore that it might not have been suitable for the piston. And we also have 
a little bit of oil on there. See if we can't. Yeah, those marks right there are a little bit concerning. Let's see if we can uh, turn the piston up and down a little bit. You can still see the honing marks. Further down here. So that looks pretty good. You can still see the honing marks and then they kind of disappear right here. And then they come back a little bit at the top there. So it doesn't look very good, but it's not terrible. All right, so going into cylinder number two. Oh. You guys see all that oil on top of the piston there? That does not feel good. And these cylinder walls don't look very good as well. So this is a little bit concerning, I gotta say. Uh, okay, so we've got, it's a little bit, it's a little bit moisty up there at the cylinder head. Ooh, look at that. Huh. Do we have a head gasket failure? No. How can that be? Really? It is pretty oily right there. Like I said, the engine was very hot when I turned it off. It was well, you know, it was well at operating temperature. I'd been idling for maybe 20 minutes outside before I brought it in here. So I'm having a look at the piston here. And it is pretty wet. And it also looks, on the cylinder walls, it looks like it's been running pretty tight, you know. Although I would say it looks better than cylinder number, number one. I don't know. We've got a couple of marks right here that are a little bit concerning, but. All right, let's go in here. Number three. Uh, number three. Basically the same thing. We have a little wear here on the power side. Got a little mark there as well. Got a little bit of oil there. There's that mark again. That's got to be from the piston ring. That's got to be the ring gap or something. That looks big if that's the case. But like I said, you guys, now I'm not a professional at this. I don't really know what I'm looking at. I would love your opinion on this. But it looks like we're definitely getting... There's definitely some oils combusting in here. But where are they coming from? I know the turbo's bad. So we might be introducing oil through the turbo. Maybe we can send the camera down in here and have a look in the, in the uh, intercooler. We can do that as well. See if there's some oil in there. All right, so last cylinder. Let's check it out. Oh. That looks, that looks oily as well. Let's see if we can't get a better view of that. That puddle of oil right there. Yeah, we got it pretty wet up here by the, by the cylinder head gasket. 
All right, guys, so that was the cylinders. Let's have a look into the intercooler here and see what we can see. Okay, so I'll record. There we go. So we're going into the intercooler here and still have a look at the bottom. Oh yeah, that's pretty deep. Sorry, Vibor, for using your camera as a dipstick, but oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good 10 millimeters right there at the bottom. So that's great. The uh, camera lenses and everything is 100% oil proof, of course. So uh, no need to worry about that. All right, guys, so in the comments, please let me know what you, where you think we should go next. I think maybe get a good, well-known good turbo on there so we can eliminate that problem, of course. And also head gasket. Maybe we can rebuild the turbo with some kind of kit or something. Uh, maybe a new head gasket. What do you guys think? I think in Maybe we should, because it's a very cheap head gasket on there. Uh, maybe that's the problem. And then torque it down to Volvo specs. All right, so I wanna show you guys one more thing before we leave for today. And we're gonna have to take a look into the B230 over there. I just wanted to show you guys just how versatile this is. Let's say you're having some kind of issue with the bottom end and you wanna have a look at a bearing or something like that. You take the valve cover off and then you just go down into one of these oil ports. And you can actually go as far down as into the, the crank. So there we go. All the way down the block. So now we're in the crank house. Crank house. What do you call it? Not crank house. Uh, crank case. So we can go all the way down to the crankcase and look at that. A perfect view of the number four connecting rod. That is just crazy. Like imagine how much you would have to get off the engine just to see something like this. And with this camera, you just stick it down here and you can see it, no problem. And you can turn the engine over and look at it, see if it's running hot or something like that. Let's bring the camera back up here again. Let's see if we can go down the other one. Yeah, there's another connecting rod. You can see the gear there for the oil. Oil pump. You can look underneath the piston. Yeah, so that that's why this little camera here is probably one of my new favorite tools in the shop and you should definitely get yourself one. I can't believe I've gone all this time without having one. I mean, it's just great. You don't have to take everything apart. You can just have a little look, you know? You're wondering, have a little look. How does that thing look? All right, guys, so go down to the video description. There should be a link down there. Click that, have a look at the camera, have a look at everything that beaver has got. They got some really cool things for your shop. And I will see you guys in the next video. What do you get?